Hey everyone, Ed and I are on vacation. We are on the lovely island of Grand Cayman, which is home to the world famous Cayman Turtle Center. The green sea turtle is a large tropical species of turtle that grows to around three feet in diameter on average, although some individuals have been recorded up to five feet in diameter. Due to their large size, adults can weigh upwards of 300 pounds, although some of those five footers have been recorded to weigh over 600 pounds. These guys are massive and you can only imagine how much food they go through. They are also a very long lived species of turtle. Those that survive into adulthood can live upwards of 80 years or more. This is one of the green sea turtles at the Cayman Turtle Center and these guys grow incredibly fast. This one, believe it or not, is only a year old, I'm told. So they grow very quickly to become out of predator, or I guess um, prey for most predators. And uh, once they get to around the size, it's not nearly as many animals will eat them. Their shells are just gorgeous though. Look at their shell, it's so smooth. And these are strong animals too. I was not expecting it to be so dense. <laughs> it's probably a good 15, 20 pounds. Right, oh. All right. He's done. Behind me is the breeding pond here at the Cayman Turtle Center. This is where all of the adults are kept in order for, for breeding purposes. The green sea turtle will breed at around 16 to 25 years old. Uh, and after that, the breeding of the reproduction rate really starts to go down drastically. But it takes them upwards of 16 years in order to become fully mature and breeding age. The breeding season for these magnificent turtles is from June through September, during which time they will lay three to seven clutches of eggs, each clutch containing between 100 and 120 golf ball sized eggs. What the females do is at night, they will crawl onto shore and dig into their preferred nesting site. They'll kind of choose what area they think will work best. Sometimes they choose better than others. And they will dig down about three feet using their back flippers. And that's where they will deposit their eggs and kind of use their back flippers to kick the sand over them and cover them up. And this entire process often takes all night before they are finally empty and able to go back into the water. Here at the center, the morning after those eggs are laid, since they're monitored so closely here, the staff will dig up and carefully remove those deposited eggs and put them into their uh, indoor incubator. You see, in the wild, the, since they're buried three feet underground, the babies, the first ones to come out, will dig to the surface and they push more sand onto the nest behind them as they emerge, which sometimes traps some of those babies and then they die before they can even come out of the sand. Uh, between that and all the predators they face as babies and having to find food in the wild, only about 1% of baby green sea turtles make it to full adulthood. Whereas here at the facility, they can take care of them in a controlled environment. And not only do they increase their survival rate to about 80 to 95%, but they can also control which ones are males and which ones are females based on the temperature they're incubated at. With sea turtles or green sea turtles, if the eggs are incubated above 82 degrees, they end up being females. If they're incubated below 82 degrees, they end up being males. Here at the facility, they want about 50-50, so they incubate them all at about 82 degrees. Since the center is so successful at hatching and raising green sea turtles, they have actually released over 35,000 individuals back into the wild since they opened. Once the eggs are laid, they are immediately collected and then brought into incubation at this hatchery. So I think we should go inside and see what babies are in there. And maybe we'll even get to see some eggs too. Who knows? Well, we are inside of the hatchery. Unfortunately, we just missed the tail end of green sea turtle breeding season, so there are no eggs or babies at this time of year. However, there's a mock-up, and you can kind of see this is actually the hatching room. So this is a heated room that they store all of the eggs in until they hatch. Hatching is really interesting. Since the eggs are laid upwards of 30 inches below the sand, it can take upwards of a week for the babies to crawl all the way out. During that time, their umbilical cord dries up and closes off. So inside of this room, they're buried under only about three to four inches of sand, so the babies come out really quickly compared to what they would in the wild. And as a result, they sometimes still have a little bit of that umbilical cord still remaining, even after they're out of the sand. Once the babies are out, they are closely monitored until they are ready for the water, and then they are moved to baby tanks inside, and it takes a couple of months before they are brought outside into the outdoor facilities. What we did find inside of the hatchery, though, was an adult 
sea turtle shell. Look at this. They're huge. There's no way I'd be able to hold an actual sea turtle if it was an adult, so I'm just going to have to do with the shell. But just like all turtles, their back vertebrae are fused to their rib bones, which are modified ribs that actually create the shell itself. So really neat to see that. It's tough too. <laughs> it's solid. Here, feel it. This is heavy. Just the shell alone. Oh it's my gosh, right? that's quite a bit of weight. I know. It's, it surprised me too when I first picked it up. <laughs> Once the green turtles reach about two months old, they're moved from the uh, indoor facility into these outdoor holding pools to grow up a little bit more. In here, we have a little two month old green sea turtle. Now, these guys are <laughs> very active, and surprisingly, scratching under their chin actually calms them down. The green sea turtle is an herbivore, so they eat primarily um, plant matter in the form of algae in the wild. But believe it or not, different species of sea turtles have different native diets. These are the herbivores, and there's others that are more carnivorous, like the loggerhead sea turtles. But this little guy, I'll put him back. Here you go. And I think there's one a little bit bigger over here. Wow, look at the red coloration of this one. That one is just gorgeous. This one's a little bit closer to about five or six months old, I would imagine. And the green sea turtles have these little thumbs on their front flippers. They have a spur up here. And on the back, they also have a spur on their flippers back here. Now the sea turtles, uh, unlike our North American species of turtles, that actually have webbed feet and distinctive toes, and that's, that helps them come out onto land to bask in the sun, Sea turtles have evolved and are built for a life purely in the water. They stay in the water their entire life after they emerge from the egg, unless they are laying their eggs. That's really the only time they come out onto the sand is to lay those eggs, and then they return right back to the water again. There you go, little dude. Ah, look at this cutie! We found one more. Look at this adorable little guy. He just must have just recently been moved out to this outdoor enclosure. It's so adorable. And their the scoots don't overlap on their shell, so they are incredibly smooth on their carapace, which is the upper portion of their shell. The lower portion is called the plastron. Everything is covered in scutes, which are these individual scales that uh, are all over their shell. Sexing sea turtles is very similar to sexing other species of turtles and tortoises. Basically, males have longer tails than females. If you look at this one's tail, it's very long, which indicates that it is a male. And if you look at the one over here, it has a very short tail, so this is a female. Males also have more pronounced spurs on their front flippers. All right, guys, do you see what this is? Look what we found. This is a bite mark. Something took a little chomp out of this branch or out of this uh, leaf here. And I suspect it's probably a certain lizard that's taking over Grand Cayman right now. They're very invasive the green iguana. If you look, there's more bite marks. That, see, they, they're very prolific, so they breed a lot. And since there's so many individuals on the island, they are eating like all of their plants and eating the food sources of the native Cayman iguana, which is now endangered because of that. But where is he? Not only does the Cayman Turtle Center have green sea turtles, which is what they specialize in, but they also have a small breeding group of Kemp Ridgely sea turtles. This is a smaller species of sea turtle, only reaching about two to two and a half feet in diameter max size. So these are adult males. They are the most endangered sea turtle in the entire world, but the Cayman Turtle Center was the first a facility to successfully breed them in captivity. And they were so successful that back in 1999, they sent 110 captive bred babies back into the wild in Mexico, where they are native to. This is one of the carnivorous species of sea turtle. The Kemp Ridleys have a very strong jaw that allows them to crunch the shells of crabs and clams, uh, mussels, snails, other invertebrates and mussels. And they particularly love, actually a soft-bodied animal too, squid. That's what they're being fed right now along with sardines. They're fed three times a day here at the facility. But it looks like they really like the squid to the point where they go around and eat all of that first and then they clean up the sardine afterwards. So this breeding facility is doing a lot of great conservation work. This is Bendel. Once he saw that we were filming, he flagged us down to show us some of the highlights around the park. Unfortunately, because of the background noises, it was hard to hear the audio. So I'm going to try my best to interpret what he's teaching us here. We've just been told that we're going to be shown the biggest turtle that is at this facility. So he's right here. Holy cow! 
Wow. Okay. How old would you say that one is? She's about 80 years old. 80? Is this Sparky? That is Sparky. I heard about her. You Sparky. can't even see her scutes anymore on her yeah, shelf. Yeah, she lost it. She lost it. She's old. So this one's probably pretty old too yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. That's another one right there. So are they still breeding at this age? No, ma'am. Sparky no. stopped laying eggs in 2001. Wow. But she has laid 25,600. Okay. The ones that get released is much younger. Okay. Like a year, year and a half old. That's when they're almost set them free. Okay. And they're going to ease it quicker to adapt up the ones and these now too. Because at 11 o'clock, they're going to be looking at 11 o'clock, they're going to look for food. They're looking for handouts, something. right? Yep. So these guys are all they used to it. So this is their retirement home now. This is it, this is it. So that's Sparky. And here and we she got is. Buckshot, we got Leonardo, we got Donatello, Halo, Florence, Stacey, Tammy, Shelby, Honey, Dot, Submarine, Smarty, One and Smarty. Two. Those are the names. That... Do you keep a certain ratio of male to female? The odds are good for us guys in here. It's like <laughs> four to one. Four to one, okay. So if you strike out on the first date, you still got three chances. <laughs> what do you think? That's awesome. All right, here you go. I feel bad taking you out of the water. <laughs> You're so calm. Well, after being introduced to these amazing endangered animals, we also got the opportunity to swim with the green sea turtles. As you can see, my hair is still wet. We just came from that, but they're free swimming in this entire lagoon area, and we were able to check them out and see them up close and personal. So we're going to end today's video with some of the clips we managed to take, more of Ed's clips than mine, because my phone, I guess when it's underwater, freaks out. So we'll be using mostly Ed's clips for those, but I hope you enjoy it and thank you for joining us today and watching today's video. If you are ever in Grand Cayman, we highly recommend you check out the Cayman Turtle Center. It is amazing and it is worth the trip. It's just worth spending all day here. Thanks again and we'll see you next week. Another lizard that lives here natively on Grand Cayman is the curly-tailed lizard. You can see how he gets its name. We have a male, adult male here. He's kind of head bobbing a little bit. And if you look close, you'll see how his tail has a different textured look to the rest of his body. That indicates that his tail has regrown, so it doesn't look like what it originally did. I'm trying to see how close I can get to this guy. Unlike green iguanas, these are insect eaters, so they're actually good to have on the island. They'll eat spiders, they eat any small insect that they can catch, basically. And they're very, very quick, so there is no chance I'm going to be able to catch them. But I've got to try. Oh, it's close. <laughs> you have another shot if you want. Nope, nope. Nope, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he's like, putting me back. You wanted to be picked up, right? Nope, nope, you didn't want to be picked up. <laughs> we have some angry sandpipers too chasing each other around. Jeez. So salty.